I want to talk about giving children tools. Uh, this comes from a very personal, I guess, experience. Um, and about a tool set I was given as a young child. I started like an obsessed with buildings. Uh, There's a picture of me a ladder to indicate that fact. Um, and my sister remembers talking about this that when we when we played, I always did the infrastructure and she did the sort of, sort of the life. Um, <laughs> what I'm not talking about is a tool set like this, or even like this, which is sort of a more bourgeois acceptable version, but still like fundamentally useless. Not one that was for role playing, not there's any role not nothing that there's anything wrong in role playing intrinsically, but one that is real tools scaled to fit children's hands. I found these kind of three examples are still left in my, in my tool bag now, and they still kind of work. Uh, this is the whole set. I can't find the whole box. I've still got it kn knocking about somewhere. Um, it's made in Germany because they have a much more practical <laughs> attitude to play. And they're kind of still really well-made kind of functional tools that enable you to kind of take on the world in a way. And what I think is important about this is that it gives you a trust and agency as a child that is rarely, rarely bestowed on you and that you're previously... You know, generally are told that you're not allowed to interfere, you're not allowed to go in things, you're not allowed to do stuff, you're not allowed to cut things in case you injure yourself. Particularly this one, just with a, the sort of in, almost impossibly to use uh, clamp. The first act of, <laughs> of my use of the tools was to make a small, a very small hole in the wall of my bedroom. Uh, not kind of act of destruction, but act of curiosity to find out what was happening inside the wall. I was kind of just wanted to find out what's going on. And the result for my dad was not to scold me, as it kind of normally would happen, but was to buy me polyfiller and tell me to fix the hole I'd made after I'd discovered what was inside it. And I think it's, I guess, a, a kind of, in sort of hindsight, quite a seminal moment for me. It was like the idea that, that you know, actually you kind of reward inquisitiveness and, and that kind of going out and exploring the world around you is deeply important. This idea that's not new, in the 1950s particularly, it kind of had, had a huge uh, growth in the uh, venture playground music uh, movement that kind of was born out of the rubble of the of the Second World War, and this idea that slightly anarchic play, the activity was not directed, controlled to make particular things, but the tools are in themselves for exploring, changing, understanding the world around us, and that in exploring the world around us, you understand the world far more than a, a kind of dull lesson could ever give you. And if you contrast that to something, the complaint that children now are spending far too much time online on digital. I'd constant the idea that is because we don't give them the tools to, to do anything di different, that we kind of exclude risk intrinsically out of their lives and kind of misguide attempt to, 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 sort of, um, to protect them. At school, our camps were allowed to be risky. We, um, we made fires, we got given knives, we cooked our own food, and intervention only made them uh, kind of to protect ourselves. Here's some uh, weapons children have made. And I guess the idea here is not that the objects themselves are that important, but the act of creating itself is important. And in creating, you make decisions about kind of what you want, the selection of wood, and that forces you to learn about solving problems and problem solving in a very kind of hands-on way. And in built in that is also risk and the acceptance of risk. And that it, at some point in every kind of in every camp, every time kind of one child will cut themselves, one child will burn themselves. But this kind of relative harm is actually it, it's actually deeply important. Where again, it's the idea of you're giving them a trust, you're giving them a faith that they can look after themselves. And when given that faith, they generally generally do quite well. And the idea that children should be exempt from any kind of injury, I think, is sort of kind of in some ways deeply patronising. And I guess this is a sort of, again, this is mainly in hindsight, an idea that really feels to have, have kind of flowed through our work. The idea that giving trust in people to make choices for themselves is something that, that's really important. The most obvious example of this is Baldock Street, where we, end, we sort of set about creating a situation and where a sort of state of exception that children were allowed to own and create and change the world, and doing that as lightly as possible by providing the equipment that enabled them to do that. The only rule being that children could not play in a manner that would prevent another child playing, and they're encouraged to explore and alter playground as far as possible. Wendy Russell describes play as creating a world which, for that moment, children are in control and can seek out, seek out uncertainty and in order to triumph over it. In this way, children develop a repertoire of flexible responses to situations they can create and encounter. So this is the self-titled Bridge of Death that was a kind of a kind of little example of this, where a kind of given a sort of very little means, the children created sort of a whole world that that had its own set of rules and then kind of played by those rules. And that in kind of in doing that process and, and kind of giving, I guess giving children sort of uh, um, equipment themselves that troubled children that you would never dream of giving sharp objects to that were seen as sort of dangerous, risky, excluded from school, it, if kind of for want for a better word, behave and play rules because it, again, it's, it's up to them to do as they see fit and up to them to kind of to manage it themselves. 
I guess uh, the idea that this also uh, this, this applies to adults too, and that adults we sort of kind of forget how to play, and I think the use, word play is used very often now, but that actually in some ways what we did in the first couple of projects was you know, regain the ability to play, so this is Cinerolium that's been sort of uh, mentioned before. Our massively expanded tool, uh, toy set of Sugar House, and, uh, and Black Horse, which is in some ways giving the toy set to other people. And I guess the idea again is this about giving people agency to change the world around them. And and in doing so, change the city around them. And sort of David Harvey refers to the freedom to make yourself and remake yourself and our cities is perhaps one of the most precious and yet most neglected of our human rights. So what I'm calling for is less of this and more of this. <laughs>